welcome to Take Two Radio. I'm Pam, your host, and joining me today is my wonderful friend and host of his own show, Mike Lidskin. Hello, Mike. Hey, hey Pam. How are you doing today? Oh, we're both in uh, doing real good today, aren't we? <laughs> my allergies <laughs> and your Tommy and yeah, but we're we're good otherwise. We're very excited to have our guest today, and I do believe that she's on the phone. So let me oh, go great. ahead and pick that up. Hello, is this Peach? This is I. Hi, how are Hi. you? Hi, I'm great. Good morning. Good, good morning, morning to you too. Except it's good afternoon here. <laughs> ah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi, Mike. Hey, nice to meet you, Peach. You too. Well, for our, our listeners out there, today we're welcoming award-winning singer-songwriter and guitarist Peach. And she only has one name that I know of, so. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> I only can't tell one you name. any more than that. <laughs> only one name. But you're all one was it. enough. One was you're enough. very prominent. It's all capitals, right? All caps, yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> she's she's right. definitely a standout person. <laughs> there you go. There you go. It's really, it's a southern kind of name, actually, you know. It's a is that thing. your real name? It is now, yeah. I mean, I got that name when I was uh, two days old, uh-huh. and um, so it's my legal name now. And uh, you know, uh, it's really just like a southern kind of thing, you know. I mean, a lot of people when they meet me, they think that I changed it, like it's like a stage name or something, you know. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. it's really uh, just my name from when I was a baby. Uh, although it was originally peachy. Peachy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's more for like when you're a kid, peachy. Yes. You know? when I, in my adult, hometown. You gotta drop that. <laughs> I always know when I'm in my hometown because everyone calls me peachy. And then, and we all talk really slow and, you know, <laughs> really get into a real, you know, southern southern kind of frame of mind, you know. Yeah, right. And then I get back to L.A. and everyone's like, yeah, is that your rocker name? You know, and I'm like, no. <laughs> you know. Where in the south are you from originally? Pardon me? Where are you from originally? I'm from uh, a little town called Anderson, Indiana. Okay, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I actually for... know somebody that used to live there. Who's that? Uh, I prefer not to say the name over the air. <laughs> <laughs> that bad, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, there, there, was, there was. I, I think Gary Burton was from there, but, but anyway. Yeah. Well, yes, let's, indeed. Let's start out by having you tell us a little bit of your background for our listeners, like when and how you knew you wanted to be a singer songwriter. Hmm. Well, I started playing guitar at a really young age, and I don't know how this came about but at the age of 11 I wanted a Fender electric jazz master guitar <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, I, and I often too. wonder whatever happened to that guitar because I would love to have it but um but then prior to that I sang in a church you know at the age of six and um so I did a lot of singing and and then you know Around the age of 11, I started playing guitar, and then around the age of 16, I started playing around the Midwest in coffee shops with these college guys who were like my big brothers. They were very kind. I mean, it was such an innocent time, you know, and and we did a lot of protest stuff, you know. I mean, we were protesting the war, and, you know, we were very involved in in, uh, all that. And then, um, you know, just things kept progressing. <laughs> mm-hmm. right. I, I mean, I never really uh, made a conscious decision to, mm-hmm. you know, become a, a musician. I guess in a sense I did. There was a point at which I was in college, and uh, I went into college thinking I was a language major, and then I, and then I switched about halfway through into music because I thought, you know, hey, you know, that's not really all I want to do. So that's did what happened. You take, 
did you take classes then to oh yeah further mm-hmm. yourself on guitar or any other instrument? I did, I did, and you know it was it was before the revolution of when you know jazz was accepted in music schools, and I mean there was the Berkeley School of Music back east, but I had never even really heard of that. I mean that's where I should have gone, mm-hmm. but I. You know, I was more of a, at that time, you know, kind of a Carol King-esque type singer, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. And here I am in this music school, and and it was at the University of Denver in Colorado. And, you know, everyone had, like, extensive classical training. And I was, like, popped in there like someone from the wrong planet. No. You know? <laughs> I mean, I could barely tell Bach from Beethoven, you know, barely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And... um of course, I studied all that, and I actually love classical music. I mean, and I love uh, classical singing. Um, but they threw me into that, and of course, I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? But the good news was, whenever a commercial came through, like the music school would get these calls that someone needed to do a jingle down at this studio you know, for commercials, and mm-hmm. I was the only person they would ever call because I was really? the only person that sang that way, you know. <laughs> I mean, it was like, okay, call that peach girl, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and then I would go down there and sing some, you know, hideous jingle and make a few bucks and and then come back and just, you know, feel like complete fish out of water at music school, you know. Yeah. So it was it was pretty rough on me. It was rough. It was really rough on my ego because you know I was really, you know, basically in there competing whether I liked it or not with all these people that had all this background in classical music and you know mm-hmm. taking like counterpoint, you know, piano and all this stuff. And you know I was a guitar player, so you had to play piano. So I made a stab at it, you know, but of course. Mm-hmm. I had not had 10 years of piano with my, you know, so anyway. Did you ever learn how to play it, or you just play the guitar then? I, I kind of stuck to guitar. Yeah. You know, I think we all like to do what we're good at. Right, right. And right. I was, you know, by the age of 16, I was already a pretty pretty good little guitar picker, you know. Yeah. And so <laughs> I I really... You know, even though I would try to play piano, you know, I would then always pull out my guitar. My guitar was always, from a very early age, my my comfort zone. Hmm. You know, any time I would get sad or, dare we say the word, depressed, Mm -hmm. you know, I would always have my guitar on my stomach. You know, that was it. And so, so college was no different, you know. And so I, I... stayed on the guitar you know well if that's what you love doing i mean that's what you needed to do it 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 just makes sense that way yeah you can't force Mm -hmm. yourself to do something else just because everybody else is yeah Yeah. just because you're in music school and being graded on this right (laughs) (laughs) well i'll tell you when i was in and when i was in high school one of the things i did not like taking was science and you had to Uh have a science credit so uh-huh. I did just enough to get through the class, and that was it. But then I yeah. excelled in everything else I loved. So I, I could see that working in anything you do. Yeah. Yeah. So. Then you know something. you write. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go for it. Oh, I was going to say you write your own music. Um, where does it come from? Does it mainly come from personal experiences? Well, I think that's the only way it can come. But I suppose. I think I've always, you know, lived in, um, I've always had a a very good imagination, you know, because I grew up in the Midwest, and we grew up, you know, where you had to, like, figure out a game, or, you know, we did, you know, or, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, and I always could, you know, imagine you know, say, you know, falling in love or all these things or being on a beach. I guess that's why I ended up living in California, um, growing up in a landlocked state. Um, But all my songs pretty much, um, usually, it was hilarious. They They either come into it as I'm falling in love 
or they they come out of it as I'm falling out of love, shall we say? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so they're all either love songs or breakup songs, you know, right. kind of a rut. It's kind of a rut, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and you know people that that uh, talk about songwriting you know they they look at these um surveys that how many songs you know what percentage of songs are love songs you know and mm-hmm. it's a huge percentage you know but of course i think love is you know a mystical thing i think it's a healing uh thing and i always think it's a it's a mystical thing because you you know you can't make someone fall in love with you you know Right, right. And, and when it's over, it's over, and you can't you can't make it, you know, you can't get it back, you know, and all that stuff. Right. So usually I wrote either going in or coming out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> good for a song. I have a good friend who's a great songwriter. I uh, a woman named Vicky Hill, and uh, and uh, Vicky was like, oh, you know, she's been really great friend and she's always like saying well you know i'll be crying the blues to her about some relationship gone bad and she'll say well i think you get one song out of it (laughs) yeah (laughs) this is a one song breakup you know (laughs) but well you know it's funny because writing songs about relationships that's an that's an excellent formula for success in music, but it's a formula for disaster in real life. You know, that's just, yeah. it's <laughs> probably the most chronicle out there. Well, anyway, that's how I was originally connecting, um, you know, to my heart. You know, mm-hmm. so that's what I so then, that's what I always try to do. So then you've moved uh, to California. Did I see in your bio that you had a Northern California connection? You were in San Francisco for a while? I did. I did a, a tour of duty up there that lasted about 10 years. Uh, that was during my jazz era, which, you know, usually if you're talking about the blues, you know, that's a dirty word. I don't know why, but uh, I don't either. You know, Amer- American blues people are, are very, in my opinion, uh, or that? I don't know. Not me. That's not me either. Mike, is that you? Um, Mike. <laughs> American blues people have, um, you know, a pretty formula approach to what the blues is. Um, but that was a bit of confusion for me because in my San Francisco phase I was playing jazz and I was uh, doing a lot of jazz. I was cutting my teeth on jazz standards. And then and then I came full circle around. My friends would always say, oh, you know, you play this song really well, you play this song really well. And it, and it took me until much later, mm-hmm. uh, which was in my 40s, dare I say it, Dare we talk about a woman's age? Um, yeah, never, ever. I, well, I, I actually, I'm just totally trying to get away from that. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a fully grown woman, and I'm proud of it. You know, it's yeah. like, can we just, uh, just move on? You know, from this fear of our age. But in any case, in my 40s. When I started playing again, I wanted to kind of rock it a little more, and and I found I couldn't do that with with the jazz standards as much. You know, I mean, it's just a different thing. Right. And 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 I went down. I started playing um, like second fiddle, basically a guitar to to this blues man that played in this blues club in Santa Monica. And uh, and he was so kind to me, and he just let me set up a little baby blues junior amp in the back and just sit there and play, play as much as I wanted, but just play along with them, you know. And and that made me 